Welcome, this is the AP Physics FRQ. This is going to be covering a QQT problem. We are looking at the 2019 question number two. This video lecture is going to be covering how it's graded from the point of view of the grader for a QQT. All QQT does start with a 12 point distribution with a suggested time of 25. There's always a scenario that is given to you the first here, it does say briefly explain your reasoning without deriving an equation for both parts here. What is happening here in this problem is that there is a hanging mass and a mass on a table and there is friction between block A and the tabletop. So that surface is frictionless. The pulley here is an ideal pulley. And it says, suppose that block A is much greater than block B. Estimate the magnitude of the acceleration of the block after it's released. Okay. Then here, it's now supposed that block A is much less than block B. Estimate the magnitude of the acceleration. All right. Let's look at how it's graded now. There are multiple ways that this is can be graded. And there are the point distributions here. First of all, it is for a correct answer and attempt at a consistent justification. The correct answer is that it is either zero, small, negligible, much less than G, or super, or the symbol less, less than G. Another point is for the correct reasoning. Here, these are three different reasonings. Also, this gives an example of what a claim evidence and reasoning looks like. So the claim can be that the acceleration of the block is zero, small, or negligible. That gets you the first point. Then the second point is the evidence that the mass of block A is much greater than the mass of block B. That would be the reasoning. And yeah, and the reason why the evidence did not require a calculation because it does says without deriving an equation. All right. So. Let's see what the student wrote here. Block A will accelerate to the floor at the acceleration of the mass of block B of gravity. That does not seem right. It says this is because it has no friction. Then part B, it says it will accelerate at the mass of block B times gravity because it is frictionless. Yeah. So no points were earned because it did not say it is super small zero or has no effect and part b earns no points because the conclusion of the acceleration of mbg and the block b has no external force acting on it so this explanation is inconsistent so it earns no points All right here the acceleration of the block is zero so Estimate the magnitude of the acceleration of the block after it's released. The acceleration block is zero. If the acceleration of the block is zero, it's not moving. The force of the block A has both it, the mass and gravity combined. Since gravity is constant in both two blocks, very oh, but it does say that it has a very, very, very small mass of block B. It would have little effect, okay, and a small force. Mm, that might get you something. The acceleration is equal to gravity when A is much less. Okay. Yeah, that might get you something. So here, both points were earned for staying. The acceleration is zero. So that is zero. Okay. And it has little effect. All right. So that's the key word. That does get you the first points. The last one. Uh, in part AI2, the point was earned for reasoning that block B would simply fall with the acceleration of G, which is free fall, 9.8. Yep, so this question will earn you all the points. All right. The next part here, it says, uh, now suppose either block mass is much greater than the other, but they are not necessarily equal. You are asked to draw and label the arrows. Okay. So a key part here is that when you draw the arrows, make sure that the arrows are indicative of how strong it is. So this is stronger than this, right? Because it's longer. So the length and the magnitude of the arrows mean something. All right, let's look at the potential answer. So that's how it should look like. 
This is the block on the table. Okay, there's force gravity down, force normal up, force tension to the right. And this is the hanging block. There is a force gravity pulling it down and a force tension going up. All right, and these are the three point distributions for correct link for a correct normal force on block A with acceptable N or FN for correct gravitational one. You can write all those, but not G or little g. Okay, that's correct because it's supposed to be forces and correct tension force should be written that way. Okay, so these are the ways to label that correctly. All right. So does greater give the normal force? That looks like that's the normal force. Um, force gravity. Yeah, it looks good. All right, so here it does earn all three points because it's correctly labeled with the correct arrows. Okay. And here they actually wrote down force normal, force tension, weight of the block, tension normal. That should get you all three as well. Yep. Okay. So the reason between these two is you can write out it the subscript or you can just write out the words. Okay. And understand the weight is the same thing as the force of gravity. Okay, they will accept that. All right. Here, it now will always ask you to derive an equation. And what I said about the deriving an equation part is to always start from a first principles point of view with an equation on the formula sheet. This is how it should look like. So for using separate Newton's second law equation for each block. Combine the equation correctly and getting an answer of A equals to this. Okay, it looks right. Because basically what this is, is that it's really the acceleration of force of gravity on block B over the total mass. Okay, because if you do this, it's basically the total mass times the system's acceleration is equal to the force of gravity on block B because block B is the one that's going down. Makes sense. All right, so let's see how the student did it. Oh, they did not have the correct um, MB here. All right, and where did they start? For using, for using separate Newton's second law for each equation, yeah, it does look they would get the first one that does look like they're doing Newton's second law, but does not look like they got any of the other two. Oh, wow. So the grader did not even give them the first one because does not clearly use Newton's second law for both blocks or write an equation for the entire system. Wow. They did not even accept this as the correct one. Hmm. M A, oh, it should be M A times A of the system is equal to M B of A of system. That would be better. Okay. Let's see here. Force tension equals to M A. Force tension for F net is equal to this. And then they set up, what did they set up here? Not quite sure what they did here. But they did get an A equals to that. That's interesting. Huh. So this is what the student wrote. Okay. So if you really want to see how it's supposed to work, I would do... So the way I would approach this problem is uh, the summation of Fy is equal to Ma because that's the direction part. And if I do my summation of all my forces, I would have the on the block, I think going up and down and force tension here. So force normal and force gravity. These two cancels out, leaving you with force tension, leaving you with this block. Okay, there was FT here and FG here. 
So I could write a here, well, FT and FT cancels. So it just becomes FY is equal to MA. So the only thing in the summation of my Y is FG. And that FG here is based on the hanging block. And this is now the system. So this becomes M A plus M B is equal to A of the system. This becomes M B G. That's what they justified here. Okay, so that's what they did here. But they subtracted. Get you the same answer. All right. So even though the steps are a little bit weird, the grader still gave them the correct answer or the points for it. So that's good. So here it earns all three points. Okay. Some things that you should notice about the way it's graded is that you should start off with an equation. There were two blocks. So that's why they got a point for that. This is the algebra step. And then this is the final equation step. Okay, make sure that the final equation, it's easy to grade because if it, it's not there, it's not there, All right? Then next, uh, then this is a consider the scenario where block A is much less. Does your equation for the acceleration of part C agree with it? Yes or no? Explain your reasoning without changing it. All right, so this is the equation from before. So... If you answered yes, you can still grade it. But if a no is accepted, if the answer is inconsistent. So if you're, so the way the graders approach this is that from the last one, here's your equation. If the equation was wrong or if the equation was correct. If your equation was wrong and you said it's inconsistent, you would get the point. If it says, if your equation was wrong and you said it was consistent, you would get no points. If, if you were correct and you said it was consistent, you would get your point because you're saying it was correct, so it's correct. But if it was correct and you said it's not consistent, okay, it is no point. So, in short, if you know you screwed up, just say you screwed up and don't go back and change your answer and just explain to the grader how you screwed up. You still get the point here, okay? So here, it's this is the equation that the student got and the student um, wrote that it is consistent because block A has a tabletop with no friction. There's no force acting on the force of gravity and therefore the block will accelerate with the force of gravity. So this does not earn any points because again, it should, this is wrong. So the student had to put no and explain why it's wrong. Okay. Here, the, this was correct. So the, the student did say yes. The student approached this problem by just plugging in certain values. And then they did get it equals to 9.8. Eight, which is extremely small the equation pretty much becomes that which is equal to 1g so yeah the student does earn it because they did show mathematical reasoning for it and the way they explain it is by plugging some values in and showing that it's consistent so you could always do that as a strategy by just plugging in certain values all right part e while the block are accelerating the tension of the vertical position of the string, next the pulley of negligible mass is replaced by second pulleys whose mass is not negligible. When the blocks are accelerating in this scenario, the tension of the vertical portion of the spring is T2. How does the two tensions compare? Ooh, that is very interesting. So remember, the QQT question will always introduce like friction or not friction. In this case, they did introduce friction. So this is how it would work. You would say that the tension in the second scenario is greater than the first one because this one does have tension. But notice that one point can still be earned if an incorrect section is still made. 
Okay, and here they give a point for that as well. So the ex because again it does says briefly explain. So it is always best for you to follow the claim evidence and reasoning format. Claim just state the answer. So it's one of these as your answer. T2 is greater than T1. Your evidence is the math. So here they include the formula as well as a diagram. And then the reasoning is they use words to describe the formula and the diagram. Here they made the wrong selection, but they wrote the mass of the pulley does not affect the tension of block B. Well, that is not correct. And then the first point was not earned, correct, and they did not earn anything here. So wrong selection was made, the wrong logic, the wrong logic was also provided. Uh, here the statement of T2 is less than T1. But they should still earn a point because it says mass of the pulley is not negligible. Energy is required to turn it. That's correct. Meaning it would accelerate decreasing from the original. If acceleration decreases, tension would decrease. No. If acceleration decreases, that means tension would increase. Um, so they do get the point for the acceleration of the system is smaller. So acceleration is decreased. But the conclusion that they made it was wrong. That's why they didn't earn the second point. Okay. All right. So there you go. That's how a QQT is graded. All right. Again, it always follows um, that step of there's always a image or a diagram. There's always a derived step. Then they always change the scenario. And based on the, ex, uh, the change, they're going to ask you to explain it. When you explain it, follow the claim evidence reasoning format for that, and you should be good. Okay, but there you go. This is a great example of what a QQT could potentially look like on the exam.